Uh, good morning, Mike. Hi, Teresa. You faced a lot of running quarterbacks this year. What makes Jalen Hurts maybe different or similar to some that you've seen? Well, great play strength. Um, you know, he's decisive. He's, I would say, fast enough. I, mean, I don't think he's the fastest quarterback, but he's a strong runner. Um, but he also has the ability to, um, you know, deliver from the pocket. Um, you know, he'll keep plays alive going lateral. So, you know, this is a uh, huge challenge. And then the receiving core, can you maybe speak to the diversity that they have there, guys that do a lot of a lot of different things in different ways? Well, I mean, they have good route runners. I mean, obviously, A.J.'s got, um, you know, good play strength. Um, Smith certainly um, can, can work down the field, but is a fantastic route runner, intermediate. Um, and, and I would say that his play strength for, you know, the player um, – you know, I guess for his measurables is, is really good. Probably something that we noticed coming out, and I would say that that's true um, now, whether he's catching it, um, breaking tackles, um, he's taking some hits, um, he's held on to the football. Um, obviously, Watkins, speed guy, Pascal, you know, intermediate, you know, does a great job in a run game, blocking for him. Uh, so it would be a you know, huge challenge like it always is. How much does it help getting Ola at least back on the field to see what he, he does, uh, particularly at that position? Yeah, I think there's uh, just excitement um, from him and, and for us to be able to start to get guys back to practice, see how they feel. Um, you, you know, the rules are very, um, you know, particular, you know, what guys can do on a, on a return to play basis. Um, so you need that, uh, that window, that 21-day window to be able to evaluate them in a setting of, of things that they're going to be asked to do uh, in the game. So uh, I think we've kind of gotten them to, you know, as far as we can get them uh, with the trainers and, and the rehab people, and, and we'll put them out to practice. The environment in Philly is unlike a lot of places around the league. How do you prepare your team to handle that sort of situation that's there? Uh, well, I mean, we just have to, you know, be able to, to embrace and thrive the, the road environment, and you know, we'll have to – to do it collectively as a team, we'll have to be really good early on in the game in all three phases. Uh, they're outscoring, you know, people 212, 120. You know, don't quote me; I'm probably off by a couple, but you know, they're really getting uh, ahead early in the game. Um, you know, affecting the quarterback and you know, hitting some runs. I mean, you saw the other night it was 13 nothing uh, five minutes into the game. So uh, that would be a difficult place to play them in that situation and put yourselves in that. So we'll have to start fast. We'll have to all be uh, good collectively and, you know, work, work from, you know, silent cadence and things that we've done in the past and, um, you know, try to make some plays, try to get some, you know, some, some stops would help too. The dig route or drag route crosser, however you guys call it, um, you had great success with that for, for a long stretch. It doesn't seem to be as big a part of the repertoire now. Is that a matter of what your people can do? Or no, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think which one you want, you know what I mean, which one you're referring to. Um, AJ and Corey ran it a lot. Yeah, that, you know, I mean, when the post safety is at, you know, eight or ten yards, it probably makes it a little difficult. You know, we, we would throw some of those uh, in the past, and then as those guys started, you know, creeping down, uh, we probably didn't. You know, AJ got hurt. I think Houston hit him pretty good. Reed, Reed got him pretty good, and he was you know, low. So we're not, you know, some of those you don't do. And, you know, we've hit some of those. Um, but, you know, we have to find ways to, to get the play pass going. You have to run the football and, you know, and then be able to, to marry, you know, some of those things. When you mentioned Houston, are you talking Malik's interception? No, I'm talking about a couple years ago when Reed, uh, you know, hit A.J., you know, because he's standing at 10 yards, you're not going to throw too many of those at, was, was when the post safety in there. Was Malik's interception on that kind of play? It, it was on one of those routes, and it was, you know, a lot of timing and things that, you know, go into those things. You have to, you know, make sure that, you know, when you're throwing the ball in the middle that, you know, guys' hands are down and that, um, you know, whether you're seeing it versus press or seeing it versus off, um, different way to run the route. Are those kind of throws the ones 
what are the many that you may have envisioned for Traylon Burks when you guys were looking at him and, and bringing him in? Well, I mean, we thought he could run, you know, a lot of the different route trees and, um, you know, envisioned him, you know, just being a, you know, playing at all different levels of, of wide receiver play. He showed the ability uh, and the physicality to, to be willing to block, to be able to um, catch and run, also adjust to the ball uh, down the field. And I think that's probably one of the things that we saw him really start to do in training camp towards the end. Uh, got into some games uh, and then unfortunately had, you know, the setback and was out. And then, you know, has been able to do some of those things uh, that we, we started to really see uh, at the end of training camp. Where have you seen him uh, improve the most in the last few weeks in the I think his attitude. I think his attitude. Um, the way that he comes to work and the way that he, you know, again, we talked about the short week in, in Green Bay for a young receiver, you know, when you're trying to add a couple wrinkles, um, you, you practice and it's a quick practice and things are shortened and, you know, probably there was some mistakes that we talked about and, and watched him work hard with Rob and, and walk through um, and, and get those things corrected so that he felt good going into the game. and you know, had, had a good game um, and followed it up with a good game. So I just think his overall attitude, you know, I think his competitiveness is good. Um, you know, we just keep working. How would you point out they're plus 13 and how have they managed to, to do that? Well, they take care of the football. You know, quarterback's only thrown three interceptions. Um, you know, their, their defense is very opportunistic. I think at home they've I was trying to see what they've done at home and started going down a rabbit hole. I think they have six, maybe six interceptions inside the 20 the yard line. So opponents have, you know, they've forced those guys, people into the interceptions, especially in the scoring zone um, at home. You know, you look at Jacksonville, uh, Pittsburgh threw one down there. Vikings, I think, threw three down there. So, um, those are critical. Not only are they, they turnovers, but those are those are scoring opportunities. So we'll have to be great with the football and, and take every opportunity we have in the red zone. What was your impressions of Sirianni when you were in Kansas City? I know. Yeah. yeah. What, what you, what a lot of energy. Yeah. A lot of energy. Um, loves football. I mean, I, I was I was I don't know how much older I was than him, but Nick was, you know, had a bunch of energy. I just. Uh, Feel like he had a good relationship with the players. Mike, you've thrown the ball better in the last couple of weeks statistically. How much has that been out of necessity because the running game hasn't been going as much? And how much of that is maybe Ryan and the guys coming together a little bit more than they had earlier? Probably both. I think probably a little bit of both. Um, you know, again, it starts you know, starts with with protection. You know, you have to be able to protect the quarterback in this league. Um, give them a pocket to throw from. You know. I think we're progressing. I think we've hit some plays. I think there's some plays that we, you know, need to uh, get cleaned up and, and improve on. And so hopefully we can do that this week and, you know, be better in the red zone. How much with the run game is it kind of your move to counter these six-man fronts that people have been throwing at, at Derek in the run game? Yeah, I mean, the 6-1 is a structure that, you know, we've seen. Um, you know, we have to be able to, to block it. They're not adding – you know, any more people to it. Uh, I think it's just the spacing and the configuration. So hopefully we can, you know, find a way to, uh, you know, progress through. And then and if they are, you know, be able to mix in a passing game and uh, work some of those things as, as we see it. We'll have to be ready for, you know, same thing from Philly. They've, they've shown that, um, you know, that, that probably is not going to change. What stands out to you about their their front? You know, with guys like, like Brandon Keep going. Graham, Josh Sweat, yeah. Keep Cox, yep, Fletcher Cox has done it at a high level for a lot of years. Got a lot of respect for him, Argrave. Um, you know, Hassan Reddick, uh, extremely versatile piece. He's played inside, he's played outside. He plays, you know, outside for them, but they drop him and he rushes and plays the run. Josh Sweat, um, Brandon Graham has done it forever. Um, you know, they've added the veterans, you know, with Lynn Ball and uh, Sue, you know, Young guys and 
it's 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 a very good front. They all play. They all play. Not only are they talented, they play extremely hard. Got a lot of respect for them, and you know that'll be a absolute huge challenge. How is Ben Jones progressing? Do you foresee him? Good. I think Ben will practice today, and then you know see how he feels here moving on to the week. Hi, Kayla. Hi. You face uh, you face guys who played for you all the time. Is it any different with AJ, given his personality, given the production he had here the last couple of years? Any different? No. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I would imagine, you know, I'll see hi. I want nothing but the best for AJ other than Sunday when we play him. I mean, he, he has to know that and he knows that. And I hope that he has the same feeling for me. You know, you put a lot of time in with these guys, personal time, professional time, and get to know their families. And, uh, you know, you want, you want the best for them except for, you know, when you're competing against them. Monday when it comes to A.J. Brown and the storyline this week. How have you seen your team manage outside noise, not not just this week, but overall throughout this season? I, I think, you know, we try to um, – it's, it's impossible to eliminate distractions. I think the most important thing is how you handle them. Um, you know, we all we all have things outside of work that we, that we deal with, and, you know, I think they all do a, you know, a great job. We try to help them. And we all try to help each other. You talked the other day about how many rushing yards that they have been putting up in recent games. And is stopping the run still a top, top priority, even with all the weapons they have? And well, I mean, I think it has to. I mean, whether it's the run game or, you know, the quarterback extending plays uh, vertically into the defense, you know, that puts a big strain on, you know, coverage and, um, you know, there's their ability to, you know, force you to play with responsibility football and, and doing your job in, in the zone read and the option game that they have. And it's not all, you know, option football, but there's elements to it. And then, then it forces you to kind of sometimes maybe let your guard down. And then there are free access plays inside that we'll have to, you know, be able to defend. Yeah, and no doubt it'll be weird seeing him in different different uniform. Um, yeah, you know, I love AJ and, uh, and miss having him around, but obviously he's doing well over there. Just hope it's not too well on this Sunday. Is it one of those things, kind of like a, uh, hear me out, kind of like an X where, <laughs> hear me out, where uh, <laughs> a little bit of history there, right? And you don't exactly want them to do so well without you? Um, I want AJ to have all the success in the world, um, just not this Sunday. <laughs> you know, if he, you know, he's obviously having a great year and I want to continue doing so. I just hope, uh, you know, Sunday's not his best day. And Ryan, right now, you're, over these last two games, your connection with Traylon, uh, obviously him being back off of IR helps. But uh, how has that connection maybe grown, particularly for the two of you all uh, recently? Yeah, just try to keep building each and every week. Um, you know, he's building some momentum right now and just want to keep expanding his role and, and what he can do for us. So, um, yeah, I think, I think you mentioned that he's doing some good things. Just have to keep expanding on that and building on it. Ryan, on Traylon, you, you guys have talked so much about how, how much he's grown, I guess. Maybe from your vantage point as the quarterback, where specifically has he maybe kind of grown the most, taken the biggest strides? I think just confidence in what we're asking him to do. You know that you know it's not just a concept on paper. It's how do we adjust each route to fit you know the defense that's out there. You know sometimes there's a lot of variation in in how you run the route depending on the defense, and then some concepts. We really need you to pretty much stick how we install it, and you pretty much run it the same no matter what the defense is. So just understanding the nuances and, and places where you have a little bit more of that, that freedom to, um, to put some variance in how you run the route and, and when you fit into a larger picture of, of where we need you to be. Picking up on that, Ryan, you, you guys had great success with the dig or the drag, um, with, with AJ in particular, who could gather ahead of steam and then kind of be physical with the first guy to run away. That route doesn't seem to be particularly popular now. Defense has done stuff to take it away. Are your receivers better at other things? Um, you know, each week's each week's a little bit different. You know, I think uh, you know we've tried to hit, tried to hit some. We've actually hit a few um, this year, but uh, just overall, we're just trying to find the best ways to attack. And sometimes that's not the best way to attack. You know, what defenses are doing that week. Do you feel like you've thrown stuff like that over the middle less? Uh, you probably know better than me. I, I don't uh, keep a keep a chart of, of where my throws are and and uh, and how many are going there. You probably know better than me. Ryan, your thoughts on just playing in Philadelphia, that type of environment, a little different from others, I would say. 
Well, that's a great football environment. Played up there uh, a couple times, and it, it's a rowdy crowd. You know, it's a it's a, um, a hectic atmosphere. You know, it's something that, that you look forward to as a football player going into a situation like that. Uh, it's a challenge, no doubt about it. You have to be clean in your communication and and operation, um, but it's a fun place to play, and, and looking forward to it. Who's got 15 picks uh, on defense? What, how have they gotten to that number, and how much is that stress this week? Uh, they're making plays. You know, you look at their secondary; uh, they have good players all throughout it. Um, you know, they, they do a good job up front of, of putting pressure on the quarterback, and then when you have good cover guys on the back end that um, you know understand concepts and, and can make plays on the ball, play the ball well in the air, uh, veteran guys who've seen a lot of football and and are extremely talented, you know, that, that creates those opportunities. They've got some big names on the defensive front, too. Are they doing a lot with scheme with those guys or just letting them to, asking them to beat guys one-on-one -on -one in front of them there? Yeah, they, they do a little bit up front, but, uh, you know, they have talented players uh, across the board. Uh, veteran defense, as you look at it, you know, from the front to the linebackers to the secondary. Uh, and so uh, they know what they're doing, and, and they do a good job of it. When Derek was being recruited, coming out of Uly down in Jacksonville, running over people like crazy. A good share of people that came to him said, we'd love to have you, but we want you to play defense. Could you imagine looking at that guy even at that stage and, and thinking he's he's not a running back? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Obviously, you know Derek had a heck of a, a high school football career. It's tough to say you wanted to play any other position. really grown in his attitude. That was something that he had noticed with him. As his quarterback, how have you seen his attitude change over the week, specifically since returning from IR? Yeah, I think it, it boils down to, like I said, a, a better understanding of what we're asking him to do. And then when you do those things and you start making plays, uh, your confidence grows. And so um, you know, we're seeing that happen with, with Traylon. You know, he's, he's had some opportunities. He's took advantage of those opportunities, and and seeing you know his role expand and, and all those types of things. So, um, yeah, his attitude is all where it starts. You know, you come in with a good attitude and eager to learn, eager to learn the game plan and the nuances of it each and every week. It's a challenge each and every week. But you know, as a young player coming in, maybe it wasn't the same way in college, where you know you're you're doing a lot of nuanced things throughout the the season that make a big difference. And so, you know, sometimes rookies have to understand what we're asking of them and, and how they fit in the bigger picture. And as guys start to pick that up and, and soak it in and apply it on the football field, I think it starts making a lot of sense and obviously you know, pays on Sundays. Young guys like that. You know, obviously, you probably test them in practice a lot to see you know, what they can handle, what they can't. Do you also try to take moments in the game and, and say, I think there's, there's an opportunity for you to make a play here and, and put them to the test? Yeah, no question. You know, it starts like you said in practice. You know, going back to to training camp, saw a lot of good things, specifically from Traylon during training camp, and um, you, know, you build that confidence throughout throughout the week in practice and throughout the year in practice, and then when those opportunities arise in the game, you, you kind of do the same thing. So it all works together. Is there a specific example you can give us of what you said? I'm going to put him to the test and see if he can make a play. I did it several times during training camp. You know, just uh, had opportunities. One-on-one -on -one opportunities down the field, and um, said, "Hey, I'm going to give him a shot. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, it'll be playing out one-on-one. -on -one. Gave him a shot, and he made the play. And so, you know, guys start making plays like that for you. Gives you a lot of confidence to keep going back. How much of that confidence has to go both ways? How much of it is him building confidence, but also you building it in him and seeing it in him? It, de it definitely goes both ways. You know, he has to, to trust that I'm going to put the ball in a spot where he can go get it, and um, you know, obviously, I have to have the confidence that he's going to be in the right spot and go get the ball. So. Uh, definitely, it goes both ways. It, go, it works throughout you know, the whole offense. It's, it's trust between the offensive line to do their job up in front of me, trust that my receivers outside, they're going to do the, the, their job outside. In the run game, you know, Derek has to trust that everyone's going to get their guy covered up as best they can and, and give him a, a, a running track on his, his lane that he's, he's going in. So um, you know, trust is a big part of what we do throughout offensive ball. What's mood, attention to detail, mindset like coming off a loss as opposed to a win? And maybe what's the feeling going into this game Sunday against a, a one-loss team. Yeah, I never like to lose. Uh, it's a it's a sick feeling, and um, you know, definitely makes for a long Saturday night and and Monday as you process that, learn from it, uh, you know, look at every detail, and then try to apply it as you move forward into the next week. So uh, it's a rough a rough uh, couple days there, and then as you uh, as you turn the page to the next week, you're just trying to apply those lessons of 
of things you, you we didn't execute upon and, and didn't do well in the game before and um, really uh, focus on ways so we can improve getting ready for the next one. Without so Derek is a pass receiver. Weeks, sorry, without Ben the last couple weeks, do you have any, do you have to do anything more pre-snap, like, you know, reminding Brew of, of a thing or two, or was it business as usual? You know, Brew, uh, Brew did a really good job. Um, yeah, communication is always a big deal. We want to make sure we're on the same page and, and try to help him a few times throughout the game. But, um, you know, really, really happy with how he's played uh, the past couple weeks up front, you know, doing a really good job of kind of setting the tone and, and executing, getting the table set offensively for us. In terms of Derek as a, as a pass receiver now, do you see anything different in terms of kind of how he gets himself open positioning, even for those short passes, the screens? Is he, you know, is he more aware, I, I guess, of where he is in relation to, to defenders? Um, yeah, you have to ask Derek how he feels about that. But from my from my vantage point, you know, he's doing a good job of, of what we ask him. You know, I think when he steps back there, everyone kind of expects it to be a run and. Um, you know, we're doing a little bit more with him in the past game, and I think it's it's helped us offensively. It's helped him, you know, get the ball in space a few times more, which is always a good thing. Is there anything you saw from film uh, from the last game that you can take from to improve, get back up there in terms of the red zone? Yeah, everything's magnified down there. You know, we talk about it all the time. Um, the margin for error is much smaller in the red zone. So uh, whether it's a, a, a play that's not executed well or a penalty, you know, everything just gets magnified and, and can kill a drive, you know, where you might be able to overcome it a lot better, you know, out in the field, you know, a first down inefficient play or, or first or second down penalty, you know, something that just wasn't executed well, you have a better chance of overcoming it in the field. You get down in the red zone, you don't have a lot of opportunities to, to overcome it. So uh, we just have to have, have better um, execution and, and not shoot ourselves in the foot when we get down there. Like you have, have made some improvements with the, with the ankle, where your mobility is a little bit better, where you can maybe use your legs even more down the stretch, or we'll be able to get to a point where you can do that. Yeah, you know, feeling better day by day. You know, it's a it's a process. It's been a long process, and I'm I'm ready to uh, to be 100% whenever that day comes. But you know, just trying to, to fight to keep improving uh, day in day out, week in week out, and um, you know, I felt like I moved around a little bit during the uh, this last game, and hope to continue to to head down that road. They have some. They have great um, skill guys. Um, so uh, when it just come down to this game here, man, um, they they believe in running the ball, and here in Tennessee we believe in stopping the run. So I'm excited for the challenge. Um, you know, we coming off a tough loss, especially with the Bengals. You know, and we didn't do a good job of um, containing the quarterback first, um, and also didn't do a good job of uh, stopping the run. So um, that's that's what we need to start first. Um, that's getting back to. Our identity and that's stopping the run. You mentioned Hurts. What is it about him that makes him so so effective running the football? I mean, he, he's elusive with it. Um, he he get guys, and I mean, I think the thing is, um, you see a lot of teams just let him go, and you know, he make that move and get right down the middle of your defense and uh, or the field, and that's his strength. Um, so he he able to make guys miss, but it's also guys just not being coordinated, and that's what we talked about with uh, Burrow last week. You know, when you got quarterback like that that can move and um, around the pocket and want to get outside the pocket, especially if I um, got cover guy doing a hell of a job taking his first read or whatever away, he looking to run um, and take off running. So I, I say when it come down to stopping his running game, it, it, I mean, of course they got some quarterback run designed for him, but when you when you see on film when guys get past him, that's what he wants. He wants you to get past him. He wants you to open them lanes up like that. So when it comes down to it, man, we just have to be on the same page up, up front. You mentioned you talked about this earlier, you competed with AJ in high school, then again in college. I mean, what, what's the talk like between you guys? And how, how much fun will they be on Sunday? Like I said, I'm, it's, it's, it's fun. It's always fun to go against guys like AJ. But at the same time, like I, like I said earlier, it's not about just AJ Brown. Um, and we, we're not just preparing for AJ Brown. Like I said, um, day first thing is running ball, and that's up front. You know, we have to do a hell of a job up front by uh, containing the run game. And, you know, like I said, he's a hell of a player, and I respect him as a player and a man. So, um, you know, since high school, since Little League, all the way up to now, man, I, you know, um, he always been, you know, a great guy, a um, great friend. So, I mean, the com uh, competition part about it, you know, I enjoyed um, competing against him. I mean, you know, he like they like. I know we're gonna get the ball in his hands. You know, they're gonna get it in his hands quick. Uh, he can make plays downfield. So, uh, you know, it's just gonna be a challenge, just like it is every other week. With what he's able to do after the catch, like how important is it to kind of like stay on top?
Mm. Yeah, it's very important. Like I said, uh, they're going to try to get it to them quick, uh, different ways. But um, if you want them quick, you know, make them try to make the tough catch, uh, contested catch, then uh, we'll have a chance. Uh, I mean, it's not the first, so uh, I mean, it's definitely gonna be fun. You know, we had some uh, battles, you know, going through camps. You know, my first two years, so uh, you know, I'm excited. You know, looking forward to the matchup between him. But you know, they still have other receivers. You know, that we gotta, you know, take care of. Is he a big talker out on the field? I mean, your ears going to be full on Sunday? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I ain't played against him since uh, college. Uh, he, you know, he probably talked a little bit, but I'm not sure, you know, if that's changed or not, you know. Do you think you advantage to covering him because you know him so well, saw him a couple years? I mean, I still got to watch more film on him, you know, uh, see how they, you know, like to use him, you know, a little bit more. But, uh I mean, we both know each other, you know, pretty similarly. So uh, he's probably, you know, going to know some things about my game, and I know some things about him. So. You faced Smith in college too. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. What, what kind of challenge does he pose? Uh, you know, he's a good, real good route runner. You know, he like uh, he can run like almost every route tree, he, every route in the route tree. So um, he can run past you. Um, so that's the uh, challenges that he brings, you know, to a DB. But um, I said he's not as, you know, as physical as uh, AJ. So. Um, you just got to know how to play either either one.